hey guys. guys welcome back to our <laughs> channel if you are new here my name is alexis and i'm from the u.s and i'm louis and i am swiss and together we live in switzerland and give you all kinds of information from both of our point of views mm -hmm. about what it's like to live but mostly to travel in this amazing country so if that sounds interesting to you click that subscribe button to stick around so we'll break down our tips by subject we'll go through packing money accommodations transit apps and what to know while you're actually here so let's get right into it so the first group of tips is all about packing so yeah. this is really kind of that foundational thing that's going to set your trip up for success so there's some important tips within here that louie and i discussed and the first one is bring good shoes i know that might be a place where you're trying to save some space but really pack some good hiking shoes mm -hmm. and something really important to remember is don't buy a new pair of shoes and bring it yeah. for the first time on the trip that's a great way to get blisters you're not going to mm -hmm. know how you're going to walk in them so bring a pair of shoes that you're comfortable with that you could walk for long distances because that's going to set you up for success mm -hmm. and all these hikes and mountain explorations the next tip is make sure to pack for different types of weather mm -hmm. and that really comes into play when you're traveling in the mountains in switzerland a lot of you come and visit in july and august it's really warm beautiful summer temperatures in the valleys and cities but once you go up into the mountains you can even mm -hmm. have some snow if you go up high enough depending yeah. on when you're traveling so bring layers i always recommend bringing something that's waterproof like a rain jacket bring good clothes that you can take on and off throughout the day depending on how hot it is don't expect that kind of warm summer temperature everywhere you're going to be in switzerland the weather's really unique here so moving outside of clothes and like switzerland they do things a little bit differently <laughs> than the rest of europe and that goes with the adapter types as well switzerland uses a type j adapters there are some universal adapters that work mm -hmm. all across different european countries but if you have one of those ones that's specifically for germany or france that have the two prongs mm -hmm. switzerland also has the third prong the ground and their prongs are a little bit smaller and the shape of the outlet is also a different size as well yeah. so actually the first time it's I'm, not gonna work <laughs> the first time i visited in switzerland we had to go get another adapter and it was an adapter adapter and then the plug mm -hmm. so it's no big deal if you forget it but they're quite a bit more expensive if you buy them in the tourist shops and if you get them at home so just make sure you have an adapter that you see is suitable for switzerland type j outlets so the next subject is about money so you will be able to use actually credit cards pretty easily we actually use some american credit cards still while we're here almost to... predominantly and we live yeah here. <laughs> because we have some travel adapted ones and you get some points etc happy to to put some uh, some links below also because we really like them and it's been working one thing about credit cards is i would not recommend coming here with an amet american express cards are often rejected or not accepted in different shops restaurants etc so visa and mastercard is what i would go for and louis mentioned it but really important make sure with those credit cards that they are adapted for international travel and they don't mm -hmm. have conversion fees because that's when the bills yeah. can get astronomical but most of the major credit card companies have all types of travel credit cards that are specifically designed for this so just check it out mm -hmm. and you can actually even get for your trip like a new sort of united uh, uh, credit card and pay for your next trips almost and one other tip is actually when you are using your travel credit cards you should be selecting the Swiss francs versus USD because otherwise you're going to be charged with more fees actually that you might not have if you have the adapted credit card. So this is another tip I think that is important and always good to remember for Switzerland, but also if you go in Europe, you'll use the Euro. It seems counterintuitive, but yeah. the fees mm -hmm. on the actual terminal are much higher than exactly. the fees from yeah. your bank. Yeah. But now credit cards, you can pay for most everything. Mm -hmm. We do travel consultations or Louis does the travel consultations a lot. And I hear that a lot of you are asking about credit cards. So credit cards <laughs> will get you most places, but I do think it's always important to have a little bit of cash and there's a few mm -hmm. instances where i do think that this is important the first one and maybe the one that you'll encounter most widely is for the bathroom so bathrooms <laughs> in switzerland and in most of europe that i've experienced you need to pay to go into in switzerland they could be a little bit expensive one or two francs they will be really clean but you need to have the swiss franc coins mm -hmm. to enter them if you don't have them you got to <laughs> go somewhere else yeah. so it's important to have those coins because it's kind of the worst i've been in that situation where you really need to go to the bathroom and you're trying to find someone on the street yeah. who has a coin or something like that so carry coins for that reason and another thing to note is if you're going to the markets on sundays or maybe the december christmas markets also then, the the self uh, the self-service fridges yeah then there's some instances mm -hmm. where it's nice if you're at like a booth or a stand where yeah. they may not accept card and it's nice to have cash for that mm -hmm. reason but widely you'll get around just fine with credit cards but i always do think it's good to have some 
some cash on you, but you don't need to take yeah. the amount you're gonna spend on the whole trip. Something else that maybe you use cash for is tipping, but important to know in mm -hmm. Switzerland that tipping is not the way it is in the United States. It's not the way it is in the United States. In most of the world, you are not expected to tip 20 plus percent. What most people do from my experience is they round up mm -hmm. to the next kind of nearest yeah, five, round ten. number. Yeah. So let's say yeah. your your bill is, you know, maybe it's like 92 francs. You like the service, you can give 100. You don't yeah. have to give something crazy excessive. And in taxis as well, a couple francs, but there's mm -hmm. nothing in the way in the US where there's standard percentage fees, but it is always nice to yeah. give those tips in and cash. I think having some cash also for, for this is good because you're going to actually be able to pay with a credit card but then leave some francs as a, as coins so that's also a nice way to to put like a 10 francs or a few coins the last thing about money is budget which is quite important we've done some videos about sort of budget tips for switzerland but just to have a few things in mind for me for lunch if you're going to get a picnic at a supermarket which i recommend to save some money i think you can count for like 10 francs to to have per person a good stuff with some sandwiches maybe some bread and cheese and things like this otherwise if you're going to go to a restaurant you can count at least kind of 25 30 francs and it can go further up if you're going to add some wine or something like this and even for for dinner i would count at least like 40 francs maybe for per person or even more, more. yeah, yeah. Uh, 50 at least uh, for, for dinner so this is just to keep in mind this is different than in other countries uh different than in italy if you're going to travel there as well so just that's uh, a little bit the, the the ranges for budgeting in terms of food so the next major category is accommodations a lot of you have questions about where to stay before we get into those tips i will plug that we have custom swiss itineraries that we have created all across switzerland from our years of experience traveling to i think almost every mm -hmm. canton in the country louis My obviously lifelong experience. <laughs> louis obviously lifelong with me for the last few years so i will leave the link here and in the description within all of these itineraries you will have vetted hotel recommendations that louis and i have both stayed in so that's a great resource if you've watched this many tips so far and you're a little bit confused this is a good place to start but let's get into the rest of the accommodation tips now yes yeah, so for booking hotels just we were on budget you can find some some prices usually ranging from 200 to 300 francs usually the the norm i think but we actually have a great resource that uh, I couldn't really believe uh, my eyes <laughs> before I tried it and it's called Wanda. It's a new booking platform in which we have our own booking platform and you can book on it and you can get up to 60% discount on it. If you want to splurge on like a nicer hotel with a spa or a pool but it's a little bit expensive you might find some really good examples of hotels like this with like 50 to 100 francs less so we really encourage you to have a look and see if you find a hotel that is uh, that is nice on this platform we'll have the link below it's as if you were booking on a booking.com but you find actually some some pearls sometimes so i found something in Grindelwald that was much cheaper and it was just so saving some money for the fondue afterwards and another tip about accommodation and I think it's actually a really important tip this one. Yes, it's actually when you go into a hotel in different cities and you have a lot of different cities and regions that do this, you receive a guest card mm -hmm. and this guest card gives you discounts on a lot of different activities in a region and gives you usually free transportation. So in Interlaken you have this, in Basel, in Bern, you have these guest card in Ticino, you even have like a region-wide free transportation, which is really amazing. Montreux Riviera as well. Yeah, so plan with this because sometimes you might actually not need a Swiss travel pass if you're going to be in Ticino for a while and you have a hotel that is part of this plan, then you might not need this uh, Swiss travel pass and just rely on that free guest card that is given to you so that's also something to uh, to look at before yep. the trip it's definitely good to take in mind and that not only gives you transportation discounts but often gives you either free or discounted entry to the attractions in the yeah. area mm -hmm. so castles museums mm -hmm. things like that and even gondolas and funiculars yeah they all have their own website but there's quite a few options i'll link as many as i could find in the description as well but for many of the cities you're traveling to in switzerland that is something that's offered so the next big section is transit i know so many of you have questions here before I even start I will say I have a how-to Swiss transportation playlist yes. that has we have a series every video. video we've ever made about all the different passes the airports how to drive in Switzerland all of that is here 
So with that said, I'll give you some additional tips that I think will help understand what you need to know as you're planning your trip to Switzerland regarding transit. So the first thing to know, and you probably already know this if you're within your planning, is there are a lot of train passes that are offered in Switzerland. There's everything from the Swiss Travel Pass to the Berner Oberland Regional Pass to the Tel Pass. There's lots of different passes that are offered and they all have quite a few differences. We have many videos that explain them, but I do think that's something that you should look into and try to pick earlier on in your planning because you can really maximize your budget around these yeah. train passes. So figure out first what region you want to visit, what regions, what locations you want to visit, then get the pass that matches the validity area and then go from there. So Switzerland has so many options, but they are really great at giving you access to outside of transit, museums, all kinds of things like that, castles. So, so many options. Check out the video I mentioned before and just make sure to get one of those because I think in almost all circumstances, it will save you money. Save you money. So if you're traveling outside of Switzerland, mm -hmm. there's also something to consider that's either the Eurail or Interrail pass, mm -hmm. depending on if you are a European resident or not. Mm -hmm. And those will act almost like a Swiss travel pass, not entirely, and you'll have access outside side of Switzerland as well. But the Eurail Pass is something to consider, especially if you're breaking up your trip between Switzerland and other countries. One last thing about these sort of Switzerland to Europe travels, if you are just going to do a one shot, for example, Zurich to Munich or Zurich to Milan, you can also just book a normal ticket. What I recommend when you do this cross country booking is to use the train line. I've used it many times and it worked and it sort of optimizes which tickets you need versus going into an Italian website that might not always work. So just uh, this is a good resource that I've tried and vetted. So this is uh, this is also pretty good if you're not going to go for the URL pass. Another thing that's important to know if you are a family when you're traveling in Switzerland always children under six are free on all mm -hmm. public transportation if you get the swiss family card up to 16 mm -hmm. children will be free to travel with you so that's really important to consider the url pass has slightly different terms of what the mm -hmm. child what's a youth i think it's child up to 11 and then youth up till 27. so if you are on the younger side or even if you're on the Older. more mature <laughs> side <laughs> if you're on the more mature side there may be discounts as well for your age so look into yeah. that so now you have either gotten your train pass and your ticket or whatever, and you're prepared to take the train. Some things to know about Swiss trains. Mm -hmm. When you are in the platform, there are really handy televisions that will tell you exactly what cart to get into. So if you have a second class ticket or a first class ticket, or if you want to go to the bistro cart, it lays it out in the platform mm -hmm. for you. That's something I didn't know the first yeah. time I came here, but you'll see the Swiss people moving around on the platform. <laughs> it's well organized. It's well and organized. You have, like it's sectors. So A, B, C, D, E, F, and it will tell you in Sector A, you're going to have second class and then a little two. Sector B, C, first class, etc., etc. So I think a, a good thing to know ahead of time. Yeah. And it's something so that when your train gets there, you're not kind of running with your suitcase down mm -hmm. the platform to try to get to your cabin. The next tip is once you are on the train, every other car or so will have a luggage rack. On both ends of the, on the wagon. Yeah. Exactly. So at the tops of the wagons and the cars, they'll have like a full luggage rack. But all of the trains, you can kind of put like a carry-on size mm -hmm. suitcase above your seat or underneath it or in between them. There are spaces for carry-ons. But if you have a big suitcase, just leave it at the mm -hmm. front of the car. Don't kind of walk down the train with yeah. it because it'll only be at the ends. And the last thing about taking trains is about bathrooms also. It's, you'll have actually a, a WC sign and this sign is not just okay, it's, uh, it's open or not, but you have to follow it. You will have, when you look at uh, the, the wagon, you'll have it either on your left or on your right and you'd have to follow this sign to get eventually to a bathroom. And I don't know if any of my fellow viewers watching have bathroom anxiety like me and I want to know where the bathroom is at all time, but a couple things to know there. The bathrooms are really, really clean yeah. on the trains. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm shocked I by them. every time the, the, the train stops at a terminal then it's being cleaned or something. Something else to know, the bathrooms on the trains, you don't need those coins for it, yeah. those are free. Mm -hmm. So sometimes in the stations, you need to pay two francs and you can wait until you're on the train, the bathrooms will be free. Yeah, yeah. Another thing to know, while the Swiss trains are amazing and there are so many things to love about them, yes. I think it is important to know to not expect Wi-Fi on the trains. Mm -hmm. I know this is in the works and they are working on it, but if you're watching mm -hmm. it right now, the Wi-Fi in the trains is spotty at best if it connects. It doesn't work. And no, doesn't, it, doesn't work. it doesn't really work. <laughs> and particularly even on on the trains where you might expect it like the Glacier Express again mm -hmm. Wi-Fi doesn't really work you're going through a lot of mountains things like that mm -hmm. do not count on having Wi-Fi in the trains so that's just something that's maybe a little bit of a bummer but I think it's important to mm -hmm. know because some people consider like okay cool when I have the train I'm gonna be able to yeah. use my phone and the last thing to note is there are actually 
three major airports in Switzerland. I know mm -hmm. a lot of people know about two of them, Zurich and Geneva, but there is also an airport in Basel, which is technically, I think, Europe airport. It's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's between it's, Germany and France. Yeah, it's France, Germany, and Switzerland, mm -hmm. right on that little corner. So there's another airport in Basel as well. And I mentioned that because they have a lot of EasyJet flights mm -hmm. in and out of that airport in Basel. And Geneva too. Nothing in Zurich. So if you want to go around in Europe, uh, you'll find some cheaper flights leaving from Geneva or Basel. And Basel is actually really easy to get to if you're in Zurich. So consider that if yep, you want to fly somewhere else in, in, in Europe, the flights out of Zurich airport can be the most expensive. It's the biggest airport. Mm -hmm. It probably has the highest taxes and they're usually Swiss flights, which are more expensive than EasyJet, of course. So mm -hmm. take a look at the Basel airport and Geneva airport is where we found yep. the best deals. So we're moving right along. This next section is actually apps that we recommend that you have downloaded on your phone yeah. before you visit. We have tested all of these and I use them all really regularly and I think they'll be really helpful for you when you are in Switzerland. So the first app that I recommend in my travel consultation, everyone is the SBB app. You can get all the transportation sort of schedules from trains to buses, boats, gondolas, everything is on the SBB app. It will even adapt based on some delay. It's not going to happen because it's in Switzerland, but uh, <laughs> this is really a super app. You can also book tickets on it. You can have your Swiss travel pass on it. It's amazing. The other app that I really like and that I use myself is Meteo Suisse. And this is particularly good because it's going to give you the weather like any weather app. But in terms of the rain, for example, it's going to get you like a minute by minute prediction of where it's gonna rain and uh, and so it might be interesting to to see this based on the different valleys where you want to go this is a pretty good app that uh, has never really failed me and it's always pretty accurate so I would like to, <laughs> to recommend this one every time Louis sees me using the iPhone weather app he gets very upset because he thinks that the <laughs> Meteo Suisse app everyone, is much more accurate everyone here thinks the same kind of yeah if you want to be like a Swiss local I don't see any Swiss local yeah. people using the weather app in the iPhone they all use Meteo Suisse. So it is more <laughs> accurate, I think, particularly in the mountains, the iPhone can get a little bit confused. Yeah. So it's, it's a good convert. But the next two apps we have to discuss are actually about food. I know we've mentioned earlier in this video and in plenty of other videos that food in particular in Switzerland can be really, really expensive. Yeah. So we found two good apps that I think can help with your budget that I think is recommend downloading. And mm -hmm. both of them actually are available to be used outside of Switzerland as well. Mm -hmm. So they're good to know about. The first one is Too Good To Go. I love it. This app is great. We love the concept of it too, which is reducing yes. food waste. So the concept of the app is in general at the end of the day when restaurants or shops or supermarkets might be throwing away some food, they will have really, really reduced prices on large volumes of food. Mm -hmm. So you could spend anything from four francs up to maybe 10 francs and get lots and lots of food yeah, kind of amazing. at the end of shifts and you can book it in advance and know that you're going to pick it up. So check out that app. We use it a lot. I think it's really great if you just want to have like a picnic or maybe a dinner mm -hmm. in your hotel and relax. There are a lot of options there, especially in the bigger city. So check out Too Good To Go. The next app to check out is called The Fork. This also operates outside of Switzerland. The mm -hmm. best thing I can compare this to is like an open table with discounts. So there's two functions of it. Yeah. One, you can book restaurants tables directly in the app all across Switzerland and quite a bit of Europe as well. So maybe you're a little bit uncomfortable calling these restaurants if you're not comfortable with the <laughs> language, whatever. So that's the first functionality of it. But the second is when they have unused reservations, you can book them at a pretty steep discount mm -hmm. up to 50%. And in some, do it in advance, but yeah. In some good restaurants, that Louis and yeah. I like in Geneva too, you can get it up to 50%, which means everything you're ordering, usually outside of your drinks, will be half off, which can help you save a lot yeah. of money in Switzerland. So I use the fork just to help as a booking tool. When we travel to Italy, Italy has yeah. the fork as well. The fork is used quite a bit around Europe. So I recommend downloading that as well. So have all those preloaded on your phone before you get here. And I think they will help make your trip really successful. Okay, so we have made it to our last category. Yeah. This category is important things to know while you are in Switzerland. So like with traveling to any country, there are some logistical differences, cultural differences, and these are just some important things mm -hmm. to know while you are physically in Switzerland. So the first one to know in Switzerland, and this was probably more of a shock to me because you're from Switzerland, this was definitely a shock to me, is the times that things are open in Switzerland. Oh, yes. I've mentioned this in a lot of different videos, but that's definitely important to consider as you are planning your trip here. On Sundays, you can consider that everything is closed. When I say everything, I don't yeah, mean restaurants. <laughs> I say that people get very nervous. Trains are open, restaurants are open, things like that. But 
supermarkets are closed all kinds of other shops. shops are closed if you're trying to go to a supermarket mm -hmm. those will be closed outside of train stations and if you're trying to do any souvenir shopping if you're trying to go clothes shopping if you need to buy anything if you need to rent equipment yeah. anything like that will be closed on sunday so it mm -hmm. could be a little bit tricky especially if you planned on being in a city on sunday like lucerne and you want to do some window shopping do some browsing everything will be closed you lucerne sometimes you might have yeah. like one shop but yeah, don't but, count on it right so another thing to consider is shops and supermarkets particularly mm -hmm. even some restaurants depending on where you're from yeah. it might be different Definitely. they close quite a bit earlier mm -hmm. so the supermarkets for example depending on where you are may even close as early as six in yep. the afternoon mm -hmm. sometimes they'll close evening. at eight <laughs> yeah six in the evening sometimes they'll close at eight in the evening yeah. if you're really lucky and you're in zurich or something some of them are open till 10 but most of them will yeah. be closing at six or seven especially in the areas that i know a lot of you are traveling to mm -hmm. expect that the supermarkets will not be open nearly as long Long as you were likely used to mm -hmm. and this goes for the shops as well so if you yep. plan on doing some shopping maybe later in the day after a hike things like that don't expect for them to be open another thing mm -hmm. that's important to know with this is the restaurants might have their last yeah, seating earlier nine, especially nine, nine, nine. in the Swiss German yeah. region they'll have it quite a bit earlier yeah, if you arrive after nine I think you Louis wait. and I have gone <laughs> into places even at half past eight and people look at us yeah. a little bit crazy so look at when the restaurants and things like that are open and just don't expect that they'll be open as late as you are used to and other tip about when you'll be in Switzerland and maybe to plan ahead is languages. We have multiple languages. We speak German, French, Italian, another fourth language, Romanche. So if you want to prepare for your trip, it's good to see what language will be spoken in a region where you go and maybe have a few words that you memorize. It's always nice to talk a little bit and show some efforts to the locals in cities and in touristy areas. You'll be able to speak English, but nice to prepare a few words in German, French or Italian. And one thing that I want to know so that you don't get discouraged is Swiss German is really, really different than standard German. Mm -hmm. So if you are studying standard German in school, maybe you're comfortable speaking standard German. Even if you're fluent in German, Swiss German is really <laughs> difficult to understand and nobody expects that you're going to know Swiss German. No. There's even differences between the cantons. So I just yeah. want to say that because I know some people within the canton. prepare really hard to come here and then they can't understand anybody and it's a little bit discouraging. Yeah. I don't think anybody expects you to be able to communicate in Swiss no. German. Mm -hmm. It's a regional dialect, so don't get discouraged. People mm -hmm. appreciate the effort either way. So the next tip while you're here, and this is to keep an eye out for the hiking signs. Mm -hmm. All of the hikes in Switzerland are marked with different colors, either yellow, white, red, and white, or white, blue, and white. Yellow essentially means it's a walk. So if you feel comfortable walking for the duration of time that's posted on that sign, you'll be fine. So it'll tell yeah. you it might be an hour and a half, it may be two hours, it might be four hours. If you think that mm -hmm. you can comfortably walk for that amount of time, you'll be okay. Yeah. For those yellow hikes or walks, whatever you want to call them, you can expect mostly paved roads. You'll have incline gains, but you'll have kind of steady ground where it won't be uneven and you won't be expected mm -hmm. to do any climbing. White, red, white would be your kind of level of hiking. So now this will become more of a real hike, yeah, but this the is the, the moderate kind of hike. So these are hikes that I myself, are like, maybe, but it depends. So the white, red, white is not like a scary hike necessarily, but check out the guides online. Mm -hmm. But if it says white, red, white, what you expect there is there might be some parts that are close to an edge, close mm -hmm. to a fall off. Yeah. There might be some, some parts, uneven, uh, exactly. Terrain, yeah. some that are through rocks. Mm -hmm. There might be some that are through little streams. Mm -hmm. You might have to have a steeper elevation gain more quickly. So white, red, white is more of a real traditional no, mountain definitely hike. Definitely medium. White, blue, white. If you don't know that <laughs> marker, it probably just means that you shouldn't do it. Blue so, is nice uh, as a color, but <laughs> it's not going to be nice when you are. If you're on the, the type path. of person that could this this hike, you would be familiar with the sign. But a white, blue, white <laughs> hike means it's a mountaineering trail, so you need gear to do mm -hmm. that. If you're not familiar with it and you see that it becomes <laughs> white, blue, white, don't go on it. The reason I mention it is because sometimes these hikes can look really moderate at the mm -hmm. start. It can look like a path, yeah. but if you look at the sign and the signs are the same all across Switzerland and you see that it's blue, know that it's going to get challenging yeah. really quickly. And uh, last tips about while you're here, I think uh, as a Swiss, I always want to encourage you to, uh, to try different things from Switzerland. So one thing is first our delicious drinking water from the tap and from fountains. This is always amazing. You can save some money also because if you are going to buy 
in a restaurant or in a shop a bottle of water it can go to like four five francs sometimes and one other thing is about so you have water but also then i would definitely encourage you to try some swiss wines because we don't really share it with the rest of the world but we still sell it in our restaurants and so this is really really good the white wine particularly is uh, is great especially from valais and vaux region are uh, delicious and amazing and otherwise i think we We've made a video about all the different Swiss foods that uh, you can try and that we love but my favorite personally is the uh, this is melted cheese melted gruyere and vacherin and this is just amazing so if you're in Switzerland and you see it at least once you should go for a fondue and I think this is a good way to conclude uh, and yeah. to have you excited about your trip hopefully. what better way to end a video than <laughs> on the promise of cheese when you're in Switzerland so thank you for watching that video I know that was a lot of information but hopefully it just helps you keep these things in mind as you're planning yeah. the trip and know that some of these resources and things exist you can bookmark this video and come back to it as you're planning I'll have all of the links in the description as well if you're watching this video and maybe you're left with some more questions and answers, Louis offers one-on-one -on -one travel yes, consultation services. It. You can book them directly on our website, travelingswiss.com slash consultation. I'll have the link in the description as well. And he will connect with you directly for 45 minutes, review any and all questions you have, your itinerary, mm -hmm. go over it and make sure you feel really confident before heading into your trip to Switzerland. Lastly, if you just want to say thank you, if you like this video, you can consider buying us a virtual coffee. We always appreciate it at the yes, link here. You. But again, really the best thank you is subscribing. It helps us so much and we really appreciate all of the positive feedback. If there's anything else that you'd like to know, I know the summer travel season is coming up. Drop a comment because we read all of them and we look forward yes. to us catching you guys in the next one. Bye guys. Bye. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. If you want to see more videos like this, please make sure to like and subscribe. We'll see you soon.